Hello, everybody. I'm wearing sunglasses because hay fever is a thing. Um, anyway, so I'm Dan. Uh, thanks for the introduction. That was awesome. Uh, and I am the Aspie World. Well, the Aspie World is a brand name, so this is my brand name. And I'm going to talk to you about uh, what I do and why I, um, I believe autism can be used as a superpower, which is pretty cool. And I've been testing this theory out now for about three years, which is super awesome. I'm super pumped. But uh, that's a picture of me there in San Francisco, favorite place in the world. Awesome. Right. So I'm going to be speedy on this because we've got like, I've got like half an hour or something, and that includes getting off the stage and people like throwing rubbish at me. So I'm going to be as quick as I can. And also, if anyone else asks me questions, I'm going to try and take some questions at the end as well because a lot of people always ask me questions. But if you haven't got any questions, don't worry about it. I also have ADHD, so try and keep up. Much love. Okay, cool. So the Aspie world. What is the Aspie world? Um, I run a YouTube channel, which is basically a. Um, it's, it's like, I make videos, I make fun videos on my condition because I always see like autism was seen as like a negative light. So when I was on YouTube and I was diagnosed, I was like, I want to learn about Asperger's syndrome on YouTube. And it, was, it was all depressing, you know, the people there were just like, oh, I want to die. It's like, oh no. So I was like, God, I want to do something fun. So I decided to make um, fun videos uh, on YouTube, but uh, talking about serious topics to try and educate people in the field, working as professionals, to help them out because I know it might be kind of helpful and I like helping people out. Yada yada. Anyway, so my YouTube channel currently has won two awards. It won one award for the YouTube Next Step Award, where they took all of the YouTube channels in the whole of the UK between 10,000 and 100,000 subscribers and said, which are the best 12 that are going to be the best channels ever? My channel account was number one. How cool is that? So I, got, I won that. That was quite nice. And then I also. <laughs> thank you very big. And I also, um, I also won a, uh, an award for um, uh, number nine out of 40 best autism blogs on the internet, which is pretty cool. So I'm kind of pleased with that. Obviously, the National Statistics Society were number one. Obviously. So um, yeah, maybe I could beat them one day. No, I'm not joking, I'm joking. I work with them. Okay, so um, <laughs> currently my channel's got uh, 41,000 subscribers here, which is a lot of people actually. And I, and I really I really enjoy uh, communicating with the people on there. I reply to every single comment. It takes up most of my time. I reply to everybody, so nobody's left out. I like and I heart every single comment. So everyone's, everyone's kind of feel inclusive. Um, and I'll talk a bit about why I chose YouTube to use it as a platform for advocacy or helping people out with autism spectrum conditions. Uh, in a, in a short while. Um, the idea of the channel is that, um, it will, first of all, it was to give people information about autism and Asperger's from my point of view so people can get inside information on it. But the secondary is now using it for a false change. And I'll talk about that again in, in a few slides uh, from now. Um, and something else you might not know about me, but I'm an international best selling author. Yes, I am. No, and I can't, and I've got dyslexia, right? And this is another thing. This is why autism is a superpower. I can't read or write for buggery, right? But I wrote a book. I managed to get a book. I got a bestseller in the US and the UK. But the interesting thing about it, I worked as a ghostwriter. So I didn't, I like dictated it, but I still did it. It just proves that nothing is impossible. It's just improbable the fact that you may think, ah, oh, okay, that's not the right way of doing it for me, so I'll try a different way. So that's what I did. Okay, moving swiftly on. Where's the clicker? Is it going to work? It's going to work. Let's do it. Hey, YouTube. Okay, let's talk about YouTube. So YouTube, the reason I wanted to do advocacy on YouTube, there's many different social media platforms like, like Facebook, Instagram, I mean, there's thousands of them. I'm on every single one because I'm a bit of a nerd. But I thought YouTube is going to be the best one because YouTube has 1 billion, 300 million active users. Now that is a lot of people on one platform. So you've got to think the outreach on there is probably bigger than any other TV network you can get onto. And it's probably the biggest social network, I think, next to... Facebook for user interactivity, for visual content, YouTube is the number one all across the world. Amazing. That's why I use YouTube. The next is that it's open access and freedom of speech. YouTube don't cap what I say. So I can say that, you know, um, Asperger's is awesome, Asperger's is rubbish, and nobody will judge you for it other than the people watching the content. YouTube say, okay, you're free to say whatever you want. And I love that because it's creativity down to the fact that you can be you without getting judged by anybody by putting it on the platform. The only people who judge you is your fan base, so you know you got to pick them well. Um, <laughs> so that was that's what I like about the freedom of speech. Um, above all else, it's creative. I'm a massive, massive, passionate person about creativity. I love creating stuff, and I'll get onto all the stuff I create in a minute. But making videos is a passion of mine. I love it. I love everything about making videos, hacking the YouTube algorithms, all that rubbish. And YouTube allows you to be creative, and they promote it, and they actually um, they wine you and dine you when you become quite big in YouTube. And like they've taken me down to London, and we did loads of training down there. And I'm going to meet them in Los Angeles next week, and all this kind of stuff. And it's really, really fun, and they they boost it because they love creativity. And that wrong really true. Me and I was like, yeah, creativity, because creativity. Creativity, I believe, to me, is, is like the biggest thing. So if you've got an autism spectrum disorder, you're really creative, you've got to push that creativity because that's the only thing that will make you really, really happy in life. That's awesome. Right, I'm just checking my time, make sure I'm not kind of like going over. Right, YouTube, second one is building a community. So YouTube, again, 1 billion, 300 billion active users. Wow, it's a big place. So if you want to build a community of people of like-minded uh, intellect and you want to build something for, uh, make a difference, then YouTube is the place to do it because what I do is, 
I answer every single comment, make people feel important and special because they are, because without them, like my channel is my fan base, which is very interesting. And so what we do is we have a Facebook group where we just discuss, talk, and support ideas, excuse me, on, um, well, relative topics, like somebody saying, oh, you know, my kid uh, coming home from school and he's throwing up and I don't know what to do, and he's going ASD, and we say, oh, can we just do this? He's having an overload, blah, blah, blah. And it's cool because the community helped each other, and that was a second kind of goal on my channel. Right. Um, <laughs> excuse me. Um, this is the most important one, I think. When I first did YouTube, like, people are going to be like, if they go on my YouTube channel, I've got maybe about 300 videos on there, which is pretty cool. I mean, that's 300 videos. And not all of them are good, though. Okay, there's about 300 really crap videos, and like maybe one good video out of 301 videos. No, but my first ever video uh, was really bad. I, I recorded it on an iPad. I was like sitting, I was like, I'll make a video because this guy wants me to kill myself. So I made this video, I put the iPad down, I did this video, and I was terrible. I had no uh, the presence on the camera, I had no kind of like personality on the camera. I didn't know what I was doing. But I made the video, but what it did, and this is interesting, this is why I chose YouTube, is because it built confidence. And confidence is everything. If you've got no confidence, you, you'll, you'll fail at everything because you, you need to be confident in it. And I was always being like this person who was, I'm on the fence, I want to do all this stuff, and I wasn't really confident. And it was like, ah. So with YouTube, I thought, oh, I'll just do it and put it out. And I forgot about it because I thought, there's only got 10 views, nobody really cares. And I came back and it's like almost on a million views this video now. So I was like, uh oh. But the cool thing about it is that I built confidence. And confidence is everything. Now, one of the things I find with people who are like um, followers of mine, I like to call them family members because we call them like the most accepted family on YouTube. But one of the cool things about my family members is they always say like, oh, uh, I want to I put a video out. I want to do something cool. I'm a creative art person. I want to make uh, paintings. I want to put them out. I'm like, do it. Why wouldn't you? And they say, oh, well, I just fear of being judged or fear of the fact that their, um, uh, their, their ability set is from an autistic standpoint, so they feel like, oh, I'm gonna get judged for putting this, uh, this, this thing out. And I say, just do it, because when you do it, it builds confidence. The confidence makes you feel empowered, and it's awesome, and you feel like super, super pumped. And I always tell them to do this. This is something cool, and you can take this one at home with you as well. And uh, <laughs> every, I get this question a lot, it's like, I've got um, an interview tomorrow, an autism assessment, or something tomorrow, and I, and I feel really bad about getting anxious, and I get anxious about everything. I get anxious about the mail coming through the door, so don't worry about that. But, you know, and these people like going for a job interview, say, how can I be confident? And I say, you need to do the Superman pose. And when you do the Superman pose, your brain says, this person is confident. So if you're ever feeling not confident, do the Superman or Superwoman, super person, X person, super pose, and then you'll feel awesome. Honestly, it's amazing. And, uh, and it works, it works so well. Just like smiling, if you're feeling down, just smile, because it works. Um, but I have to force myself to smile because my facial uh, expressions don't match what I'm thinking. My girlfriend's always like, why are you sad? I'm like, what? But anyway, we're not, we're not we're talking about my girlfriend here. Um, okay, so, next slide. Let's do it. Right, is it working? Next slide. This click is so cool. Inspiration. Right, so, being inspired. So, um, coming to terms of an autism spectrum disorder, you go, oh, okay, so this is why I sucked at school. But I didn't suck at school. School sucked at me. Like, I was there and I was like, I can do this. But then school was just like, oh, uh, you know, it's 1998 or whatever. What, what's autism? So it was kind of really difficult for me to find, uh, to dig my way out of this kind of hole. So I was diagnosed officially with Asperger's syndrome when I was 26. So from like, I've had all kinds of diagnoses all the way through the years, you know, you know, he goes this way, it's like, he's dyslexic, he's ADHD, he's shy, whatever. So uh, it was really fun kind of get to the autism spectrum zone. I was like, gosh, dang it. But I wanted to do something cool. I wanted to be inspired. So um, this is again why I turned to YouTube. I actually started making YouTube videos back in 2008 before they started uh, monetizing the platform. It wasn't like a big thing back then. But it's big for videos, but not like, you know, creative, um, like entrepreneurs, if you like. So it wasn't that big. So uh, YouTube drove me to be creative, and this inspired me to do more because with YouTube, I could have a voice that I didn't have anywhere else. If you go down the street, you're like, hey, this is Asperger's syndrome. Everyone's like, shut up. You know, but if you're on YouTube and you're like, you type in a thing, like, do you want to see some cool stuff about Asperger's syndrome? Everyone's like, yeah, I'm Googling it. And people come across it, and it's inspiring because you go, wow. I can help educate people, help push people to do something cool or understand an autism spectrum disorder just by being empowered or, or inspired by, by YouTube, the platform itself. And um, the other thing was focus. Now, this is interesting. So in developing a superpower, if you have an autism spectrum disorder, or if you want to encourage somebody's superpower who has an autism spectrum disorder, you need to encourage focus and focus or promote focus because to me, it was like, I focused on stuff, like I'm really into aliens and stuff like that, I'm one of those weirdos, so like, I'm really into aliens, and I was like, I you know, fall asleep on my keyboard at two o'clock in the morning, just Googling stuff about aliens, and I love it. And um, I wanted it was like hyper-focus. And I never realized that this would come into play later on in life. When I actually applied this hyper-focus to my degree, I was able to actually, actually do a degree. Okay, I did have adequate support from academic uh, support for disabled students, but the idea 
behind the concept of doing my exams, it was me, you know, on my own doing this stuff. It was down to focus. Focus is everything. A lot of people think that autistic people zone out. You heard this term, oh, you zone out. So you're walking down the street and then there's all of a sudden, there's a, I don't know, a tissue on the floor. Come on, Dan. Ooh. And they're like, why is he, he zoned out? He's zoned out, he's in his own world. No, 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 he's zoned in. And he's in that world. Because I come across stuff on the floor, I'm like, whoa, how did this get here? What is this? How does it? What can I use it for? How can I take this apart? How can I make it something better than it already is? Where did it come from? Who put that there? What's it made out of? What if I could make that? And that's what my brain does all day, every day, constantly. And so when I hyper focus on something, everyone's always like, come on, stop it. We've got to be somewhere in like an hour. Um, but no, it's, it's a good thing. Hyper focus is a good thing. So promote hyper focus and focus on attention to detail. And this is interesting. A lot of people will tell you that people with autism can't abstract think, but that's what I do. I look at something and think, how can I take that apart? That's abstract thinking for you. So anyway, that was quite interesting. So inspiration. I take inspiration from a lot of things, but focus and YouTube, which is awesome, which is why I do what I do. So, and this is a cool graphic. I stole this, so hashtag don't sue me, Google. Um, you know, I just, it was cool. I just thought it was cool. Please don't tell anybody. Nobody works for Google, do they? Oh, thank God for that. Right. Where are we? Autism superpower. Okay, so there's another graphic I stole. Well, I stole two. I, I stuck these together myself. I took this one from Google and this one from Google. I put them together, put a bit of sparkly bits on it. Well, I, Cool. Anyway, so, um, God, it's hot up here. Uh, where am I? I don't know what I'm saying. I'm losing track of thought talking about my uh, Photoshop. Right. Um, autism superpower. Right. So, autism superpower. It's the superpower because um, I taught myself to play about five or six dis different instruments, right? I never touched an instrument in my life, and I was never really interested in music. And then one day, uh, this guy I know called Jake, he was like, oh, I need a bass player for this band I've been in high school. I was like, I'm gonna, I'll do it. And he was like, you know what I think about music? I'll do it. And my dad was a musician, I always, always looked up to him, I was like, cool. So I picked up the guitar, and I taught myself how to play guitar, because guitar, music is math, right? It's all about frequencies and patterns, each piece. So I was just like, oh, I love math, I love music, but I've done it. So I did it, and I learned how to, I learned how to play music. And then I, I was in a band, and when you hyper-focus on things, you're able to achieve those things. Again, hyper-focus and confidence. So there's only two things in that recipe. I had to hyper-focus on wanting to learn things, um, and the, uh, the ability to, to have confidence to go, right, I'm going to get there, I'm going to do it, I'm going to play music in front of loads of people. Or not, anyway, because most of the gigs I play, there's like two men and a dog there. But, like, you know, it, it's, uh, it's kind of cool, and it gives you this confidence. And when you have this confidence, you kind of get empowered, you're like, I am the bass player. You know what I mean? It's like it's, you are no longer this weirdo in the street who can't communicate with kids, or the, you know, the kid that lines up all his toys or doesn't go to bed. You're know, this guy who plays music, and it's empowering, and it's super empowering. So if you have somebody you know, or if you are somebody on the spectrum, who has a hyper focus on something they love, promote it because it will build confidence. Confidence is everything. Confidence is king in this scenario. So with my band, I was like, okay, look, this is an idea of hyper focus. I applied the same rules that I applied to my hyper focus to looking at things abstract to ideas and principles of moving forward. And what I mean by this is, have you heard of like vision charts? People say, I made this vision board, it's fluffy and pink, it's something on Pinterest. And you think, yeah, okay. But what is it? And people just use it as like a vision board, you know, it's not on my kitchen to look like. And that's just one thing. So I took it a step further. I've used what I know with vision boards to make a goals board and a vision of what can I do with my life? How can I propel myself forward with the things I love? So I was like, I want to CD out in Japan, right? My band's like, you know, this is a band from Hollyhead and Anglesey. Never had a record out. Anywhere in the world, like, I want to CD out in Japan and I want it to chart. But how I was going to do it. I made a vision board. I said, this is what I'm going to do. And when you do it, you align your focus with the things that you love and the things that you're passionate about, you're hyper-focusing on those areas and you'll find a way. So I did it. So I, I, I managed to find a record label in Japan, sent them a demo, they loved it, and then they signed the band and we came in at number five in the newcomers charts in Japan and HMV and Tower Records, which is super dope. So if you go to Japan and be like, hey, we hit a straight jacket legend, someone's going to go, yeah, man, they were number five next to Blue Panic 2. And I'll be like, no, that's my band. Well, okay, over here, nobody cares, but still, in Japan, I love it. And so again, that was an idea of hyper-focus and pushing focus to something that's really creative. I love it. Okay, so the second thing I did um, was I let school with no qualifications because everybody in school was like, ah, uh, yeah, so you can just circle tennis rackets in our exam. I was like, what? How is this math? So they just didn't know my learning style. And that was annoying because like, if they focused on what I knew and how I, my abilities, it could have like, propelled me forward. So anyway, I went back and I did loads of uh, access courses and stuff like that, and I went back. So you do an access course, start from the bottom, you know, and they put you right at the bottom, like, right, here you go, son. Write your name. It's like, oh, man, I could write my name, just about. But, you know, I, so start at the bottom, write my name, and I came right away, and now I have a degree in chemistry. I'm an actual official scientist, way. But, um, yeah, I did a degree in chemistry, which is crazy, and I didn't realize it when I was backing on this mission. That chemistry was the hardest bloody degree to do in the university. And they were like, you're doing chemistry? I was like, yeah, what was wrong with it? And they're like, what? But it's amazing, and I applied my focus to it. And when I applied my focus to it, I actually built tools. And this is something that I was just talking about to some other people earlier. 
for my dissertation, I did uh, computational physical chemistry. It sounds like a mouthful. And the thing I loved was molecular symmetry and group theory, uh, or point group theory. And what I did is I built a teaching tool for, for um, computational physical chemistry in Minecraft. So anybody could go on Minecraft and be like, boom, I just learned you know, physical chemistry in like 10 seconds. Cool as that. But again, it was hyper-focused. And I love, I love just fusing the things I love together. Um, obviously, we know I wrote a book. Again, I was like dyslexic. No one, if somebody told me about 10 years ago, Dan, you could have a best-selling book in the US and the UK, I would be like, what? I can't even spell my own name. You know what I mean? I have to write a book. But I did it, and I focused my thought, and I was like, oh, what, what can I do? And I loved, I was passionate about Star Wars, and I was like, how does Star Wars help me growing up with Asperger's Syndrome? So I, I fused Asperger's Syndrome and Star Wars together, and then it was like, hey, we have a book. And then the publisher was like, love it. You know, publishers are like, love it. Anyway, so we did it, and it was really fun. It was like, they, they, they put it out, went down to London, we had dinner and stuff, you know, and there was headphones on. And, anyway, but um, it was good. It was good fun. Um, it was scary as heck going to London, though, but they were really good. The publisher were really nice, and they, they kind of, like, were really nice about, um, you know, the, the, the autism thing. So, right, the last thing I'll talk about before we take some questions, because no one moving on, and then they'll probably look at me. Flash account of me. But um, <laughs> it's building my YouTube channel. This is cool. So I did YouTube. I started YouTube and I told you I put the video out right on the iPad. It was rubbish. And, like, and then got like, I don't know, 300,000 views. I was like, uh oh, people actually want to see more. Damn it. So then built confidence, which is cool. So then I got to last year. And in November last year, I had 13,000 subscribers on YouTube. Channel. I thought I was like, yeah, man, 13,000. This is awesome. And, uh, and I thought, and I was really too confident in it, right? The confidence came too much. And I was like, dang it. But then people want to see more high quality, better concept content. And I was like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to up my game? So I applied my hyper focus to creating cinematic cinematography. And I've never done cinematography, I've never done photography in my life. So I did. I learned and taught myself how to make cinematic uh, videos. And I showed some of you guys earlier um, some cinematic uh, videos that I've made. And I love it. Now I'm obsessed with cinematography. And the second thing I did to, to push my channel over the edge. And I'll tell you where I got to today, um, is I studied, this is really boring, but I love it. It's search engine optimization, SEO, and LSI type content, which is how you optimize search engines to pick up your content. I love it. And YouTube works on an algorithm, and an algorithmic change. And I studied the algorithm like some really super nerd, you know, sitting all night like, ah, oh, how does it work? And I pulled it apart, pulled it apart, and I found out an amazing hack to hack YouTube to make it work in my favor. So now I get an average of 70 to 90% out of 100 SEO score on my videos, which is nuts. And today, or yesterday, actually, last night, my channel hit 41,000 subscribers. And that's just since November. So my plan is to try and get 100,000 by uh, uh, December this year. And the reason for this, people are like, oh, he's just fame, hungry, glamour, whatever. No, the reason for it is this. I want to change how the public services, uh, how people with Asperger's and autism access public services, how they access shops, how they access like hospitals and stuff, because these places are not accommodating to people on the spectrum. Now, years ago, in like the 70s or the 50s or 30s, whatever, as far as you can go back, wheelchair access for wheelchair users was zero. And everyone would just be like, oh, well, that's Saul's law, you've got a wheelchair, then that's your problem. But now, if you sell something, you'd probably get prosecuted, and it's now illegal to not have wheelchair access in public services. So everyone cares about physical disability. Oh, yes, they do, but nobody remembers about neurological, neurodiverse issues or mental health issues. Nobody's aware of this, the fact that they need to adapt their place to accommodate these people. So I was like, how am I going to get these people to listen to me? I'm like, hey, I'm down. They're like, yes, so get in the back of the queue. You know what I mean? There's a million people, you know, campaigning for this, campaigning for that, constantly, day up. So I was like, how am I going to do it? And I thought, if I build an army of 100,000 strong people who are willing and able to actually be move the, the paradigm shift with me, that will be amazing. So that is the goal of my channel. So that's what I'm doing. I'm building my channel to make it 100,000 strong. I want only like, you know, uh, what is it now? 59,000 away, 59, away to get 100,000 strong. But, you know, um, the, the idea is going to be that one day we will definitely push that barrier of 100,000 and I will make a campaign to take to these governing bodies and say this needs to stop and you need to actually take accountability of having access to your places for people with these conditions. Because if I don't speak out about it, who is going to speak out about it? There's loads of people doing it. And the Autist National Autistic Society are doing it to a certain degree, but they're quite like just blasé with it. And, and there's no offense to them. And I just want to go in there and smash it. Like, come on, let's do it. We're going to do it. Get on, get on with it. Because the National Autistic Society, we've got to do it in the process. You know, we do it little by little. It's like, no, we need to do it everything all at once to make sure these people listen. And that's just me. So, yeah, anyway, that was me and my presentation, Dan the Aspie World. And if you want to check, me out you can go to the aspieworld.com um, and it's spelled like it's spelt like the aspie world or you can just google the aspie world you find my videos or you can type in asperger's in, in uh youtube and i'll come up as number one yes baby anyway so i will take some questions if anyone has any questions i'll take them now before the people kick me off the stage so has anybody got any questions at all 
No? We're good? Oh, yeah? Oh, wait, microphone. I won't be able to hear you otherwise, sorry. My supersonic hearing hasn't developed yet. Despite what I've just told you. I'd just like to say, first of all, yeah. you've just uh, shown me the male version of my daughter's car. You are, ah. You're incredible. It is as well. Nice. Um, you talk about um, hyperfocus. Yep. Um, how do you encourage that in a child who's got partial uh, learning difficulty as well? It's finally the thing I'd say that would be the most, that was their main interest. So like say a kid, so uh, for instance, a parent said to me, oh, my kid's obsessed with Minecraft, right? He's on it all the time. And then she was like, oh, I, I, I don't want to be on it all the time, so take him off because it's damaging to be on a computer game. So actually computer games help develop all kinds of skills. And it's actually very encouraging. So I would say, no, that's the hyper-focus. You need to promote that. So it's whatever their super interest is. They must have an interest in something or have a specific kind of like franchise. Like music. There you go. So it's that, the more that they can use it uh, to develop, because what they're doing is learning skills. It's not like we just sit there and, and passively watch things. I, I know it's just anybody with an awesome spectrum disorder, don't passively watch TV. I don't watch TV, I don't watch TV, I don't watch things because it's boring, it's not creative, it's, it's just, um, you know, it's recreational, it's something that's something we're already done, it's recreating that. So if you do something that's creative, that's helping the hyper-focus, the hyper will come because of that creativity. So I'd say just focus on what, what they actually like and, and push, push more of it really, and encourage it. The best way, but in a, in a safe and healthy manner. I'm not trying to say like 24/7. I'm just in, in a half, half and safe manner. Yeah. Thank cool. You. No worries. <coughs> Anybody else have any questions at all? This is Jen here. Tom. Um, a lot of the bills that have been passed by the same and the line have been put through by MPs who have had the impediment themselves. Do you know that there is any? Um, it's a good question, actually. I, I mean, like, as their main kind of push, I don't know of any that, that that's their main focus. I know that there's a few people, especially from Wales, um, I work with an advocate called Angie, uh, from, um, uh, she does a lot of work with Wales from Autistic UK, uh, and um, they, they are actually meeting with a lot of people in the government and the MPs, and the MPs are in support of it. But I don't know if it's their main focus, and then I guess that MPs have got a lot on their plate, so I'm yet to come across an MP that's just like, oh, this is my thing. Unless I stood myself, you know, but um, you're just saying, like, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of people that are interested in it, but I, I don't know anybody who's just like, that's his main focus. It seems as if, unless you have the um, disability yourself, well, I think it's pushed. Well, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's a main priority for me, because I live it daily, but for them, it's just like another thing on their to-do list, isn't it? So that's why that happens, I guess. Anyway, any more questions from anybody? Lady over here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Hi. Yeah. Hello. Uh, thank you so much for your amazing support and making this so clear. Cool. Uh, my son is nine. He yeah. has about this many stuff. He is really mad about YouTube. And I uh, just wonder, um, how can you copy or how you copy when you Seem like negative comment, negative comment, and um, how, how you copy to you these day to day because it's amazing when you get a positive, but when you get like a slide, oh, yeah, yeah, and oh, it's hard to get a turn for me. And I think, well, I'm not sure about, and I'm well, thinking about that. Oh, well, first of all, there's an age restriction on YouTube, I don't know if you're familiar with it, there is an age restriction on that, and I think it's like 16 or it might be 12 now. There is an age restriction on it for all these reasons. Emotionally distressing when you have hate comments. But this is it. Haters come all the time. You get haters for everything you do. And when you put yourself out on a public platform, you say, well, look, I'm leaving myself open to haters. Not everybody in my family loves me. <laughs> so I don't expect any of the internet to all love me. Now, the way I deal with it, and I think about this quite interesting, you know, like, so hate is, um, I never use the word hate, so I don't like talking about it. I never use it, so it's got bad vibes. But haters send me comments all the time. I like and I, I like their comments. Give, give their comments a thumbs up and I comment back. Because the thing is, when somebody's hating on you, it's not because you're a bad person. Because if the majority of people really like your content, and even if they don't, it's not that you're doing what you love and that's cool. But the hater obviously has an issue that they're dealing with. So I always think that there's something going on in that person's life and then to go on the internet and have a go at me because they don't know me from Adam, you know? And they go on and they're like, you suck. It's like, okay, but like, you know, it's not their fault. So I just go, oh, okay, cheers, nice one. And I give them a thumbs up. I comment back to haters, you're just like, okay, nice one, dab it away, you know? But the, the, the fun thing about it is that you have to kind of think, and I, and I learned this, I, I didn't know this, and my girlfriend said it to me. She's like, you have to know, like, 
they, uh, I'm like, sorry, my girlfriend, by the way, she works in the field as well. She's worked with uh, kids in the spectrum, day and day out, and that's how she can stun me. Um, and the, the, the interesting thing is that she said, look, there's something going on in those people's lives, so don't worry about it, because what, it doesn't affect you. It's their, their issue. It's not an issue for you. You know, your stuff is fine. I'm amazing. But you know, their stuff is, is weird. Yes, I know. Highly modest. Yeah, no worries. Any more questions? Anybody before?